Hello everybody and welcome back to Provis Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved Custom Scenarios. Today we're going to do something a little different in the sense that I'm actually going to kind of, sort of, revisit uh, a scenario that we've already played before. A long time ago, you guys might remember I played a scenario called the Semi-Realistic Zombie Plague, which may even show up here in a second. Uh, no, there, no, no, wait, there it is. The Semi-Realistic Zombie Plague by Anita Chal. Which was actually really good, if I recall correctly. It deserved the five stars. It was an excellent scenario. The author contacted me recently and asked me to try out another scenario, which apparently is a replacement, like re-upload, since the author lost the files. But the original is right here, so I'm not too sure why a replacement was needed. But along the way, the author says that uh, he, she, made some tweaks and asked me very politely to try it out again. So you know what? I don't usually retry things. But it's technically separate, so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, let's see, improving on the ones from the previous scenario, still heavily work in progress. I mean, work in progress is what you say, but last time it was really solid, so you know, I, I I'm okay with your idea of a work in progress. It's better than any beta version the game is trying to sell me lately. You got good scenarios. All right, Necrovirus, of course, it is a zombie plague. ATP boost, Darwinist, Aquasetic Shumophile, and Dopamine Inhibitor on normal difficulty, and it is called Oyugandis by default. Why? I don't know. Necrovirus, we are starting off in Central Africa, apparently, whether I like it or not. That's interesting. Okay. So, being a Necrovirus, of course, we are going to have to get our zombies up and a run, and let's take a look at our transmissions. We can have air, we can have water, we start off with Parasitic Infiltration. Fungus able to survive in and on bodies of live animals. We can choose which animals we want. We have the insects, the rodents, and the birds, and then something else down here. Maybe doggos. I don't know yet. Symptoms. We start with Dermal Growths. Fungus grows on skin of animals, feeding on dead skin and hairs. Okay, so it feeds on necrotic flesh and stuff like that. I like that. Rash. Blistered and painful, slightly increasing infectivity. Abilities. We have our heat, cold, and drug resistance. Nothing really new there. So let's go ahead and grab... I'm going to go for insects, actually. If we're starting off in Central Africa, I think that makes the most sense. It's not exactly humid, but it's also a hot country. It could work. Let's also go ahead and pick up the rash. That leads to necrosis. Hooray! Large swaths of infected tissue. Lose blood supply and become fatal sources of gangrene. Decomposed bodies remain a vector of transmission. Very useful, by the way, for the zombie plague, since there will be a lot of rotting flesh all over the dang place. If I have anything to say about it. Yeah, so Central Africa is rural, poor, and hot, but nothing else, really. So going for air or water doesn't really do a whole load for me. I think maybe we want to save up for birds. Just so we can get a little bit of extra land transmission. Anything to help get me out of Central Africa as soon as possible is probably a good investment for me at this point. Yeah, I don't remember a whole lot about the semi-realistic zombie plague, aside from thinking it was really well done. Uh, primates. Oh. Able to use primates such as small monkeys and lemurs as carriers. That could be relevant for us in the future, homo sapiens. Yeah, I don't remember a whole lot about the previous scenario. I know it was really good. So I'm not going to remember... Oh, there's necrosis way too early. Let's go ahead and devolve that. Um, I don't know exactly how this is going to contrast with the original, so I don't know where to identify all of the tweaks. So, you know, forgive me if I don't remember all of those things. It was a long time ago, if I recall. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some air now that we're getting into the arid countries. Uh, we will probably want to get some water transmission in the near future as well. We'd we'll love to go for primates. There's just a lot of things that I need. There's necrosis again. Good lord, it just really, really wants to be necrotic. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of infectivity, but... Yep, and they've already detected me. Okay, well, uh... Not much I can do about it. Maybe we just keep the necrosis. Alright, you know what? Fine, let's keep the necrosis and see how well it does. I do want to save up probably for the water transmission now that we're getting in places that uh, will be able to send ships off. Egypt, for example, comes to mind. Pretty soon we should hit a critical mass here, and we're going to want that to send some boats off to other countries. So let's grab that. Just opening up a few more transmission vectors. Doop, 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 doop. Good news is we actually have enough uh, severity from necrosis that we're getting a pretty good amount of DNA. So I like that a lot. We can go for primate, and that leads to ape 2. The fungus can take apes as hosts as opposed to carriers, allowing for altered behaviors such as mass cannibalism and aggression. Mass cannibalism. It's a term I've never thought of before, but it sounds absolutely horrifying. Uh, okay, so we have our necrosis and nothing else we really can do yet. We're going to have to continue down the transmissions, I think, in order to unlock our zombies. 
first we're just gonna be like a flesh-eating, mind-altering uh, fungus, right? But after that, that's when you're gonna be in real trouble. Hominidae Bridge. Hominidae. Hominidae Bridge, the uh, typical ape and human jump. It, this is actually kind of starting to pull in a few, um, a few traits from the uh, simian flu as well. Apes kill and eat family of five in Uganda. Yikes, a troop of chimpanzees recently attacked, killed and ate a family of five living in Uganda. Authorities say the chimpanzees were not malnourished or desperate and ate out of psychological obligation, not metabolic needs. Ah! I mean, chimps, monkeys, and apes in general are stronger than I think a lot of people give them credit for. You know, you don't really want to mess with the chimps. And the apes. Mostly the apes, but also the chimps. You know what I mean, though. Like, yeah, they, they they together absolutely could probably rip a person apart. And probably would, if given the opportunity in some cases. So I have no idea how to get to that. But we do now have access to headache. So now that we've got our necrosis and stuff spreading, now we finally get to start mind-altering the humans themselves. So the fungus breaches the blood... Ah, bleh. Blood brain barrier. It's like my tongue doesn't even want to cooperate today. Host may experience mild discomfort in form of headaches. Then we have the migraine. Extensively around the surface layers of the brain, host feels great discomfort in form of migraines. Cannibalism. Extreme compulsion to bite and eat other humans, significantly increasing infectivity as well as lethality. Maybe we should have allowed the um, necrosis to just go ahead and do its thing the first time it mutated rather than try to hold off. Because it looks like you kind of were going to have to go down this route anyway if you want to get toward the zombies. Advanced growth progression. Fungus rapidly accelerates in growth over the brain, opening the door to manipulation of the host. A new wave of cannibalism from riots and so on. They've started working on a cure. Uh, already they've already they started working on a cure? I'm usually accustomed to having my zombies by now. Um, let's go for this. This leads to aneurysms and fatty tissue sac. Fungus induces growth of a lipid layer around the brain. And of course, aneurysms, just nutrients and oxygen causing punctures and bleeding. Um, so I really need to find the zombies ASAP, because that's the main way to actually spread at some point. It's also my only way of really getting into some of these islands. Aneurysms mutates for free, okay. Uh, it's not what I wanted. I wanted to get the fatty tissue and see if we could get to, uh, any sort of reanimation? Anything at all. 47% cure progress right now. Here we go. That leads to cytopathic reanimation. Culmination of advanced control-oriented growths and preservation cocoon has allowed for the fungus to keep the brain functioning post-mortem. Some of this stuff is really well described. Like, the descriptions in this scenario are certainly solid. Like, what's not to like about any of that? All right, we really need some DNA, namely 17 points. I don't have a lot of time to make this work. Uh, they're working pretty aggressively. Never mind, we get it for free. Okay, now we have our zombies. Huzzah! Let's go ahead and get the traveling horde so we can get out of here. I want to go to, let's say, uh, Australia and the Caribbean, some of the islands. Let's go ahead and get up into Ukraine and stuff. I don't know. We, need to, we just need to get around all over the darn place. Get into Madagascar next. Go forth, my zombie hordes, and feed. This is one nasty fungus, that's for sure. What else are we missing then? So they're gonna cure us relatively soon, and we really would like to have had some sort of a presence in every country before that happens, if possible. Because it saves us a lot of effort. Let's get up into uh, Russia as well. Just a few zombies that are able to go around and continue biting people after they distribute the, you know, the, the cure. It's kind of a crucial strategy. Let's try going up into Iceland, and also to Greenland. That's all I've got in terms of DNA at the moment. They should be distributing the cure relatively soon. Now, usually on normal difficulty, I am able to kill everybody before the cure is even finished. So, already this has been rebalanced rather substantially. I think we're going to get into every island now. Let's go ahead and make sure we get into Canada, keep that ball rolling. And the cure is complete, which means we're not going to be getting any new um, infected people, but the zombies should be turning everyone else. Zombies destroy Pakistan. Okay, great. Uh, we could have gone for some resistances and stuff, and that certainly would have helped. But there's no longer any point in going for any transmissions or resistances because the disease is cured and no longer relevant. Instead, let's go for the cranial elephantitis. Adenema triggers mutated growth hormones, which encourage bone growth in the skull for a combat advantage. Then we have the fungal melon. A large, pressure-change-sensitive pad of fatty fungal tissue resembling both in appearance and in function the melon in dolphins enables echolocation. See, this is starting to remind me a little bit of the zombies from uh, The Last of Us. 
Just a little bit. And I can't remember if I made that comparison in the uh, slightly more realistic zombie plague scenario as well. Maybe I did. I really can't say for absolute sure. Uh, let's make sure we are surrounding ZCOM while we have the opportunity. Get into uh, France and so on. You guys need to get up into Italy. Okay, so I don't think any of the islands are going to avoid us. And that's one thing that's easy to overlook and you gotta be careful about that. So Greenland, Iceland, no problem. It's really just Central Europe itself. Increased fungal extremities. Fungus grows much more soft, spongy tissue over ordinary flesh, often changing appearance of zombies to be almost inhuman. Slows the zombie decay and starvation. I actually like slowing zombie decay quite a bit. Adrenal surge, uh, increasing their alertness and uh, aggression. Fungal plating. Large hardened plates of fungus grow over the head and upper face of hosts, acting as armor. Again, combat advantage for when we want to kill Zcom. Enhanced chemo recep uh, reception. There we go. Chemo reception. Fungus attempts to restore more complex brain function. Zombies become smarter and more alert. More complex tasks, such as opening doors, are now possible. Yeah, that has always been like the number one downside of all zombies is just basic doors. You have you have limbs. You have hands. You have motor control. I say use them. Mummification. A severely decayed zombie is able to enter a state of hibernation. Reduces rate of zombie decay, especially in the hot countries. And Cthulhu Strain! Well, this is now far less accurate. This was supposed to be slightly more accurate. Now it's got Cthulhu. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad to see Cthulhu involved. Praise him, but... You know... <laughs> it's no... The, the name of the scenario is slightly more accurate. Zombies! Of course, then again, you know, when it comes to zombies, I mean, they don't exist, so... There, I guess there is no such thing as slightly more accurate. It's all subjective. The Cthulhu strain is typically characterized by large amounts of long, powerful tendrils used to take down prey and climb vertical inclines. And then we have a strong gag reflex. Enables certain zombies to cough, cough up rotten innards and stomach contents at potential hosts. They get combat advantage and infection more likely. Again, infection does nothing, but uh, I do like getting a gag reflex for the combat advantage. Self-cannibalistic tendencies. When a zombie's limb is damaged beyond use, the fungus will consume the dead weight to compensate for the disability it now faces. Slow zombie starvation. And spore clusters. Clusters of spores resembling eggs grow on certain zombies burst when near potential hosts. I mean, that all sounds incredibly promising to me. Let's get some zombies from Turkey into Central Europe. They can cross the water, it'll be fine. We're actually going to need larger zombie hordes if we want to make this work. Uh, let's go for horde vocalization for the hundreds of thousands. We'll just continue to uh, set up around Zcom. I don't anticipate these guys to last long. Actually, they haven't... No, they're not dying off. We're definitely... We definitely have enough combat advantage to take this on if we sent a large horde. But for now, let's just make sure that whatever Zcom they try to set up has nowhere to, uh, to go. Let's get into Sweden. Uh, let's get into Germany. Let's... Uh, sorry, I went to Finland. Never mind. Finland, let's get to Sweden, and then eventually Norway from, let's say, Scotland. Boom. Okay. boom ba doop dum 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 And then... Let's see... We can go for the fungal plating and the lumbrical hypertrophy. Severity significantly increased. Again, the more severity you have for zombie plague, the better. Ravager strain. The Ravager is a class of infected characterized by an extreme degree of alertness... This is the second time I've seen alert spelled wrong here. Large, powerful, hinged fungal structures resembling mandibles. Very dangerous. Sounds dangerous. Anytime someone uses the word mandible, I just find myself incredibly intimidated. All right, let's go from the Balkans up into Central Europe. Let's see. Could go for the Cthulhu strain for fun. Kicks and giggles. Mummification is nice, but honestly, since Zcom is only set up in one country, I don't think we have to worry too much about the starvation rate of my zombies. Though, that said, they are dying rather rapidly. Like, they're not lasting too long. Um, but I could probably fix that if I just go for the hordes of millions instead and see if that'll be enough. Maybe? I'm a little concerned. Let's go from Ukraine into Central Europe. 17 million zombies, and then let's go from the Balkan states up into Central Europe. There's a few more million, and that should be more than enough to deal with them, yeah? I guess we'd go for things like the autolytic decay and stuff, just slow down decomposition, keep them in this country a little bit longer. And there's Adrenal Surge, symptom mutated for us for free, and we also have destroyed Zcom. Hooray! So that should be the end of the zombie stuff. We also have the Behemoth Strain, a massive strain much larger than an elephant. How the fungus manages to encourage bodily growth at this scale post-mortem is unknown. You know, this is actually starting to sound also 
uh, a little bit like a, a certain SCP scenario we did on that all long ago too, you know? Where it's kind of manipulating the flesh. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that as well. Anyway, I mean, yeah, I guess, okay. I, I, I didn't need to be harsh about the Cthulhu strain. It sounds like it's just, an, it's just a catchy nickname for some sort of a strain of zombie, but it isn't actually intended to be, hey, Cthulhu steps out onto the world. Susens suspension of disbelief still counts for something. I'm just saying. Oh, you gone this! And its zombies have consumed humanity. Literally, there is nothing left. Okay, so, I mean, it's a perfectly fine scenario. Again, I'm not entirely sure how it differs from the semi-realistic zombie plague, though I'm sure that it does. It definitely has a pretty solid balance to it, right? I mean, they were able to get up to 100% cure progress. Forcing people to get the necrosis kind of early on is an interesting twist, but it's not wrong. It still works just fine. A little bit slow, but otherwise okay. Uh, the symptoms are good in their descriptions and their customization. I was going to complain a little bit in the earlier stage that it's a bit linear, but it turns out once you have the zombies, you have a lot more room to kind of work with, so that's that's perfectly fine with me. Yeah, there's really nothing wrong with this scenario, aside from a few grammar mistakes here and there. Balance-wise, it's good. Customization-wise, it's good. And I like that it's, uh, it's just a fungus. It's just a really malevolent, corpse-raising fungus. You know? It works for me. I think it's a good one. Again, I think the last one was really good, too, though. So, yeah, I'll say yes. Slightly more accurate zombies is worth playing. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>